welcome to Lights Camera History. This video is the background that you will need to fully understand the events in Changeling. If you haven't seen this movie, I suggest you go watch it now since there will be some spoilers. Here is one right now. The LAPD is awful. You would be surprised just how real this movie is. Some movies have that based on a true story label, but the one rightfully declares it as a true story. And the people that made this earned that distinction. Stick around to find out just how crazy this story is, but if you like this, we will be doing historical reviews of movies periodically, so check back in, but also hit the subscribe button or the like button. Your support is appreciated. Okay, here we go. The movie was originally to be directed by Ron Howard, but it would end up in the hands of Clint Eastwood. Both have done great jobs with historical movies throughout their careers, so it would have been in good hands regardless. But the real win here belongs to the scriptwriter, J. Michael Straczynski, which based on the entire story on real documents. Many historical movies have to invent dialogue. Here, much of the conversations are based on those documents, and the scenes in the courtroom come directly from them. Before we get into the case, I think we should do a deep dive into the LAPD history. I wanted to get a good feel for the history of the LAPD, so I went to the Wikipedia page looking for search ideas. I noticed that the history of the LAPD page was oddly short for such a storied and busy police department. Although I'm not completely computer savvy, I went through the edit history and tracked down the information that was shared by Wikipedia. I found that there were heavy edits and deletions by people around or loosely connected to the LAPD. I was able to track down an IP address within a mile of the LAPD headquarters. Does somebody want to tell them that the sins of the fathers don't reflect on their sons? I'm a bad father. But don't worry, LAPD. I found the history of corruption and deceit in other places. So I had to turn to JSTOR, court documents, and newspaper articles to piece this together with no thanks to the LAPD. So for the early history. In 1869, Los Angeles was being overrun by gangs, prostitutes, gamblers, murderers, and plain drunks. As one visitor stated, the name of the city is in Spanish, the City of Angels, but with more truth, it might be called presently the City of Demons. Another observer wrote at the time that it seems like nobody was dying of natural causes. So to clean up the streets, the city hired its first crew of paid police officers in 1869. The first police chief was U.S. Marshal William C. Warren, and by all accounts, he was a straight arrow trying to do his job. So he wouldn't live long. He was actually killed by one of his own deputies over some reward money, 200 bucks, or around $4,000 in today's money. The reward money was a big deal since the officers were unpaid. Instead of getting paid, they got shares of fines, completing tasks, or rewards such as the returns from a stolen property. The officers weren't even issued badges. They had to either order them or make them themselves. So every cop had a different badge. It was really easy just to order a badge and pretend you're a cop to take people's stuff. There would have been little standardization on the fledgling department as officers were required to purchase their own equipment, uniform, or sidearm. Consequently, officers equipped themselves as best they could with whatever they could afford. If you were to read a badge back then and it said two, you would automatically think there was a uh, number one, but officers picked their numbers without any order at all, leading to confusion as there were several matching numbers. If you're looking for a great example of how poorly the department was ran in the early years, accurate records of officers killed in the line of duty were not maintained prior to 1907. All cops up until 1960 were untrained, poorly paid, and although despite a few police chief's efforts, were incredibly unprofessional and corrupt. The LAPD Museum's website completely glosses over the next three decades, including the mishandling of the Walter Collins case. However, here are a few notable cases I thought you guys would like to know. In 1916, Police Chief Charles F. Sebastian was forced to resign after an extramarital affair was exposed by his wife, who discovered a bunch of letters written by his mistress. The letters were demeaning to his wife. The ordeal was embarrassing to the city and to the chief who had resigned. In 1921, the city hired one of the most respected cops in the country, August Balmer, known as the father of modern law enforcement, but quit because the department was just too corrupt and returned to his old job, which his old job was scraping roadkill in the middle of summer. 
Just kidding. Even that would have been a big step up for his dignity than the LAPD. In 1922, James W. Everington, police chief, admitted to the LA Times that an honest man can't run the LAPD. And in 1923, Chief Oakes's men in the Red Squad unit kidnapped Upton Sinclair, a prominent writer and socialist politician. A worker strike rally was held in support of free speech rights of industrial workers of the world. As Sinclair began to read from the Bill of Rights, he was promptly arrested by officers of the LAPD, who said, We'll have none of that Constitution stuff. In 1925, the police chief, R. Lee Heath, was known member of the combination, an alliance of the politicians, cops, and mobsters. The next police chief would be featured in the movie. As you can see, the LAPD was just the worst. So there is a little history on the LAPD. Our next video will be on the screen adaptation of Changeling.